Hello guys, welcome to a new vlog. Thought that I would start with um, a little food shopping. I have really got to get a tripod because such a treacherous setup and it doesn't even show me fully. Um, hi, so we just got back from a really big food shopping and I thought like, I don't know, I kind of enjoy watching that kind of content from other people even though it's not like the most interesting thing ever, like it's literally groceries. Um, but I thought I would share <laughs> because I'm just looking for things to film also. Um, from tonight until tomorrow night, there's a holiday where everything closes, grocery stores close, everything. So, um, there's like this like, get everything you possibly could need. Um, even though of course you're not going to eat all this food in 24 hours. But we're also going to like a big friend's dinner tonight, so we're gonna make uh, ratatouille. Uh, my mom makes like a really good French ratatouille. We bought a lot of vegetables for that, so I'll start with that. Please don't knock over the camera. So first we got some veggies. We got lemons, uh, zucchini, avocado, lots of tomatoes, orange, bell pepper, Fennel, one of my favorite vegetables. Um, got some fresh coriander, onion, rosemary. I prefer not to buy things in plastic, but sometimes just it's kind of unavoidable. Garlic, tahini, and a few peaches. And then after that, we went Oh, this is so heavy, to um, a different food shop for like non-vegetable things. So, um, organic eggs, um, farfalle, bow tie pasta, uh, some dried fruits and nuts. So we've got dried mango, dried cherry, which is like a bit sour. Ohad really likes them. These are um, slivered almonds. Slivered almonds, or are those the flat ones? Almonds cut like that. <laughs> Cashews. I got some honey. I got a wild blueberry jam, which I really like to have on toast with a bit of butter. I love butter and jam. This is um, extra fine pulp rustic mashed tomatoes, like a basically tomato sauce base if I want to make some kind of pasta. We were out of olive oil, so uh, we got this one, organic olive oil. It's made locally here. And Tony's Chocoloni. Of course, this is um, dark chocolate, almond, and sea salt. And then the last place that we went to is, um, so we live like kind of near a market. And when we first um, moved into this apartment, the woman that lived here before, she gave us this amazing list of all of the best places to go. Like go to this guy for cheese, go to this guy for olives, go here for vegetables, go here. So that was very, very helpful because it was a bit overwhelming. So I went to the kind of cheese guy. Um, and I just got some olives and this is goat feta because we want to put some maybe crumbled feta um, on the top of the dish that we're making tonight. And then this just seemed really uh, comforting and warm and I'm feeling the fall vibes. Um, so this is cinnamon, apple spice herbal tea. I feel like I can make that in the evening with a little bit of milk. It can be kind of like a spicy autumn tea. So that is all of what's going on here. Anyways, also you're propped up. I'll show it uh, later because I can't take it down now or the camera will fall. But I bought um, a cookbook. We have two cookbooks and I don't use them so much. The biggest problem with them is that almost every single recipe requires some kind of ingredients that I just cannot find anywhere. So it's almost useless or it just feels like 
impossible. Sorry, I'm gonna close that door. I found this cookbook, which is a Sardinian cooking, so Italian cooking from Sardinia. Yeah, I just went and got some um, not packaged mushrooms. Yeah, all of the mushrooms that we found were like um, wrapped in a lot of plastic, so. But then I needed basil and it was packaged. Yeah, I know, sometimes you can't avoid, that's what I said. Earlier. Plastic. Basil. We want to make a pesto. Uh, so basil. Mm, got arugula. Mm, yes. Mushrooms. Ooh. I got vine leaves. Also in a package. I think in, in America we call them grape leaves. Got vine leaves. All right. All right, that's it for now. Wait, I was talking in my head was cropped. It's okay. Talk to you guys later. Okay, I've just walked in from work. Uh, normally we work in the daytime, but on nights when we have performances, we work, we start working later. Um, and our group is, like our dance company is sometimes, not all of us work on the same night, so Ohad is performing and I have the rest of the night off, so um, I just walked in the door. I wanted to share my outfit. I'm happy to say, well, I think I'm being a little bit too um, wishful thinking to wear a sweater. I do, do feel like we're embarking on possible sweater and long sleeve layered weather. That will make me very happy, um, although I'm a little bit hot now, so I feel like we're not quite there, but this is just um, striped uh, long sleeve actually given to me by my friend Amelia. Um, underneath, I just have like a vintage t-shirt. Um, these black pants, sorry, the house is a mess here. These black pants I just got from Cause. Um, just like drawstring black. They kind of remind me of like a very elevated like chef's pant. Um, and at first when I saw them, I thought maybe they would look more casual than they do, but I feel like they're a really nice um, piece that you can make um, more casual or more dressy, depending on what you pair with them. They're pretty lightweight. Um, but yeah, just comfortable, but they look, they can look really smart, I think. And I'm wearing black uh, socks, and these black shoes are actually also from Kaz, um, I think, two years ago. And my bag is just like a tote bag, actually, this side says Holland Dance Festival. It's a dance festival that happens yearly in Amsterdam that I've performed in a few times, um, so that's why I have it. So that's what I'm, that's, that's the fit today. I thought to make dinner, well, I need to eat something. Um, but while Ohad is at work, I thought to maybe dip into this new cookbook that I bought and see if there's something easy and that I don't re need to buy a lot of things for, see if we can make something. So obviously, I'll take you through that. I'll show you, we can look at the cookbook together, we can decide together. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing currently. Then I hope to start this, which is The Dry Heart by Natalia Ginsberg. I kindly borrowed this copy from Jessica from Jessica's Bookstack on Instagram. Um, and I know it's such a short read and something that you can read in one sitting that I kind of imagined for my evening Sorry, there's an airplane passing overhead. I kind of imagined for my evening that I would sit and just like light a candle and just read this front to back So maybe that's ambitious. I don't know. I'm gonna try
Okay, let's look in our cookbook. This is the new cookbook that I got. How gorgeous is that? It's called Bitter Honey, Recipes and Stories from the Island of Sardinia, which is an Italian island. I have not yet been in. I'm gonna crouch down here. I haven't been yet, um, but I would love to. And there was something about this cookbook that was, first of all, just, it's really, really beautiful. The photography is gorgeous. Not only like food photography, but just photography and also a lot of stories about Sardinia and life in Sardinia. Sardinian uh, legends, jokes, way of life. So I just thought that was like culturally interesting. It was like Italian food, but mixed with like the freshness of island food um so i had to buy it i've just been stuck in the things that we always make which like we love and we enjoy and they're easy like we don't have to think about them they're just things that we always rotate a few dishes but sometimes you just want to switch it up and i don't know i i just had the feeling like i didn't want to look up recipes online i wanted to like actually have a cookbook to turn to you so Let's look together and see what we can find. Like a yogurt cake, which looks really good. Obviously, I'm not gonna make that for dinner. This one sounds good. Artichokes braised with sage, lemon, fennel, and olives with saffron aioli. Okay, this is the one that I think I'm leaning towards making tonight, which is slow-cooked zucchini with mint, chili, and almonds. That looks super good. Yeah, olive oil, garlic, zucchini, chili, sea salt, mint, lemon, almonds, which I actually have a lot of those things. I need to just go out and get mint and zucchini. Linguini with lemon, basil, pecorino, and mascarpone. I just made a bucatini pasta last night, so maybe not pasta tonight. This one looks really good. I have to make this one. Baked chicken with citrus, fennel, and white wine. I love fennel. Fennel is like such a good vegetable. Um, I understand if you're a vegan or vegetarian that this wouldn't work for you, but I do eat chicken. I think I'm gonna flip through a little bit more and see, ooh, marinated salmon. Okay, I'll catch you later what, with whatever I decide. Okay. Back from the store. Store decided two veggie dishes. So we're gonna get started on the slow cooked zucchini and the suffocated cauliflower. I was reading um, M Train by Patti Smith. I'm like, started that today and probably gonna like read that over the next week. Um, I do wanna get to this um, tonight and see if I can finish that by like tonight or tomorrow morning and then continue reading M Train. In the first section of M Train, Patti Smith is um, reflecting on a trip that she takes with her partner. There's like a tax, not a taxi, like a driver from the area that they're in. He's driving them on a long drive towards a different destination. I'm sorry, like it's, there's, you have no context. Anyway, she's talking about how he's playing on the radio um, calypso music. Calypso music is a genre of music. It's Afro-Caribbean. It's like originally from Trinidad and Tobago. And I just felt like Afro-Caribbean music, I think that's what I need to listen to tonight. So I'm probably gonna listen to some calypso music while I'm cooking. Well, I hope that turns out like that. We're done with most of the zucchini dish. Mine is not as like golden, but also 
I think I might have had a little bit too much oil and so they didn't really like brown. And also I think possibly in here the zucchinis are just slightly different colors. But I'm going to wait until the very end to put the um, almonds, mint, and lemon zest on it. And then that will be finished. And now I am... <laughs> Cauliflower is so messy now, it's like all over the house now. Um, so now I'm onto my suffocated cauliflower. So I'm gonna throw this in a pan with a little bit more oil. This is like the leftovers of the zucchini. And cook these away, suffocate them. Final look. Um, I'm sure like with every recipe that you do for the first time, you can find things to tweak and change. Um, but that's done. Cauliflower over here cooking. Although I'm gonna shred a lot of Parmesan in here and make it kind of cheesy also, so. Okay friends, hi. It is Monday morning. Um, we have a day off from work and I'm headed to meet a friend for coffee, but I wanted to just share with you the fit. Um, this is just a white t-shirt. Um, I don't think you can get this one anymore, but I will link in the downstairs like something similar. Um, these are like my favorite trousers right now, which are these black trousers from Cause. I think I was wearing them last night also. Um, they're just amazing. I'll also link those downstairs. And I'm pairing them with just Muji socks and my sneakers from Camper. And I'm stealing Ohad's bag. This is like, um, like kind of a leather tote that he got secondhand. Um, in Italy, in Rome. So that's me today. Spent the morning um, reading a little bit of The Dry Heart by Natalia Ginsburg. Loving it so far, so um, that's what I'll probably do when I get back home. Bye! Okay, so this has officially become a cooking channel or something. All of the content in this vlog I feel like is food related. So I just wanted to obviously share with you what we're working on now. Well, the lighting's really dark, but anyway. Um, we're doing a marinated salmon. So I've got my marinade here, which is minced garlic and ginger with honey and soy sauce. It's supposed to be equal amount honey and soy sauce. We ran out of soy sauce. So this is a bit more like honey syrupy, but I think we can fix that later by adding more soy in the end. I've got here fresh salmon that I went to the fish... Uh... What is a fish place called? Uh, I went to the fish people um, and got fresh fresh salmon. And then, once you've got everything in a plastic bag, we're gonna take this marinade and I'm gonna put it in the bag, although not all of it. I'm gonna save a little bit to put on top when we're actually cooking it in the oven because I'm gonna marinate this in the fridge for a few hours. And we're just gonna close up the bag and just kinda move it all around in there. I'll show you. It should look a little bit something like that. Just a big mess inside the bag. If you had more soy, it would be a little bit more liquidy. Sorry for anyone whose fish content does not interest them. We're having a friend over for dinner. So we're making this fish dish, fish dish, and also like an orange soup, meaning like a soup with all the orange vegetables, like carrot, sweet potato, pumpkin. So a very like autumnal dinner. Have some wine. 
Um, but before that, we are social butterflies today. Um, we're gonna meet two different friends for a glass of wine, a aperitivo. Life is good, I guess, you guys. We're on our way out to meet our friends for a drink and just wanted to share with you what I'm wearing. Um, so I've got some lipstick on, as you saw earlier. Same white t-shirt, same black trousers from Cos. And this is a blue kind of, sort of suede material um, shirt that I got from a friend's secondhand sale that she threw in her apartment. So I got that. I'm with my pouch, just with my wallet inside. And I'm wearing these, <laughs> there's no way to show you. Um, well, these uh, kind of loafer with a small heel. Um, made in Italy, but I bought them here in Tel Aviv. Actually, my, our very good friend, bought these for me. Would you like to show what you're wearing? Did you decide? Yes. Right? I think I decided. Do you want to take the camera? Will I regret this? Yes. No, you won't regret this. How can you regret this? I'm wearing these pants that are secondhand that Ben bought, but they're actually ASOS in this really cute um, slip, dress. slip dress that is from... That I got in Target. One of the best things I ever bought, like almost 10 years ago, I think. This I got Ben for his birthday, and I think I wear it more than you, actually. It's true. Uh, it's and Max it's Mara. vintage um, Max Mara. Very pretty. And I wanted to wear these really extravagant um, new vintage shoes that I got. They're Steve Madden's, but then I realized we need to bike, so I'm wearing these. But they're so cute. And as always, like anything that I we can link downstairs, we will. Um, but most, we wear a lot of second hands, so it's hard to recommend you the same item. <laughs> You're so pretty. So we're making uh, orange soup. Why is, is it orange? Because uh, it has orange vegetables in it, or mostly orange. And we started with frying some garlic and ginger. Garlic, then ginger with olive oil, and then onion, full onion, and like, I usually keep like the pipes of a fennel that you don't eat raw because they're like really fibery, but I put them in soup because they like had a really nice flavor. And then fried that a little bit, like let the onion kind of like become more clear, and then carrots, potatoes, pumpkin, um, and yeah, whatever you have left in the fridge. We had like half a zucchini that was getting old in our fridge. And what's going on now? And then I was frying it with also like all the herbs slash dried herbs you have. Actually, we have some, some thyme. dried thyme. So I put some rosemary and dried basil and uh, dried cilantro, turmeric, paprika, black pepper. Just basically fry it. Then, then I added some salt to like help the vegetables like release their juice. Release their juice, and I added some like rice cream, kind of cream. Frying it without a little bit. Yeah, and I'm yeah. gonna soon like once they like. Because they were like up to here and now they're like getting smaller, so I think like soon I will add water. Usually I'm gonna just put it in the blender and like. It'll be a creamy soup. Yeah, thank you. Taking some asparagus. And we're waiting for the soup to cool down a little bit before we blend it. Yes. And. I have prepared each uh, fish fillet inside a pocket of tin foil with a little bit of air so that, that it can kind of steam itself. 
That'll take about 20 minutes on 180 degrees. Hi guys, um, let's see what day it is. It's Wednesday, the 29th of September. Actually, it's Ohad and I's five year anniversary today. So we'll probably uh, go have a nice dinner together or something. Ohad is still at work and I am in the empty nest tonight at home. So I thought that I would um, just start to wrap up this vlog. Where is that book? Also, I'm on the floor of my bedroom and I'm not sure how nice this setup is. So, I am reading The Dry Heart by Natalia Ginsburg. I'm about 44 pages in and I plan after I film this to just sit and finish it because I feel like it's 108 pages. I can, I think I can do that. For a second, let's introduce this book. So, literally the book opens with um, our main character taking a revolver out of the desk drawer in her husband's office and she shoots him in the face between the eyes. <laughs> so, we start with a bang. And after shooting him, she goes outside, she walks around, she goes to a cafe, she has a, a quick espresso at the, you know, coffee bar and she just keeps kind of walking around the streets like you do after you shoot your husband. So the story opens up like that, which is very strong, sharp, and striking, which I love. So our main character is basically a teacher who's working in a sort of boarding house. She's in her 20s and she meets this older man, I think he's about 20 years her senior, named Alberto. I. I don't think our main character has a name, somehow. I don't think so. She meets this man, Alberto, and they start like going on walks together, and he's bringing her some things, and he keeps coming to the boarding school to see her. And everything is like lending itself to the fact that they're lovers, um, or that he's interested in her romantically, um, but in fact they're not lovers. She's not really interested in him in that way, but then she gets kind of used to seeing him and then he leaves like for, I don't know, 10 days or something uh, and doesn't write her anything. And then she kind of starts to become obsessive and she can't stop thinking about him. She can't get him out of her head. Then she starts to ask herself, like, maybe I do love this man. Like if I'm thinking about him so much, maybe I'm in love with him. Maybe this is love. Then she's confused because she thinks about like, but if I think about having sex with him, I'm so not interested. So that, that means that I, I'm not in love with him. And she finally comes to the conclusion like, okay, I need to tell him that I have feelings for him. I need to tell him that I'm in love with him because I don't know, I just, I can't stop thinking about him and I, I want to know where he is at all times. And maybe if we got married or something, then I would at least know where he is all the time and I wouldn't be like in this mystery. He's also like a mysterious man. He doesn't really reveal anything about himself. She finally tells him that you know, she thinks she's in love with him. And he says, oh my God, I'm super surprised. I don't feel the same way. And she's kind of broken by it. She's very confused. And then he does come back and say, actually, I can't stop thinking about you. Um, let's get married. And she says, yes. So big question for me is like, 
something's wrong here. Also, it's made clear to her that Alberto has another female lover um, that he really loves. So on top of all of that, they decide to get married. And I'm like, baby, this is a bad relationship for you. So where I'm at now is um, that Alberto keeps going away on trips and he says that he's going with a friend of his and then our main character runs into that friend on the street and realizes, okay, my husband is not with him, so he must be with Giovanna, this other woman, the other woman. He's becoming obsessive about that, paranoid about their um, relationship, and in general, she just starts to really understand, okay, shit, I made like a really bad choice. I totally regret getting married, I don't know why I'm in this marriage. In the French flap leaf, it says, The Dry Heart is a short, dark, and psychological ri psychologically rich novel that forensically examines how an unhappy marriage comes to end in murder. So yeah, basically we're just um, navigating an unhappy marriage, which we already know from the beginning ends with her shooting him in the face. As with Ginsburg, she is such a distinct writer and she has such precise way of using language. It's very clean, it's very clear, but is quite punchy and in the back it says, this book is a Roman candle, quick and explosive. I can agree, definitely. I definitely enjoy her style um, and yeah, she's just a great writer. I'm gonna go read the rest of that and probably try to make a dinner reservation for tonight. Um, so I will come back to you when this is finished. I'm sorry for the dreadful lighting. So, last night I did finish uh, The Dry Heart by Ginsburg, but as I mentioned before, it was our anniversary, so we kind of, like, I finished it and then I ran out the door 10 minutes later to meet Ohad for dinner. I do think if you can read this in one sitting, it's 108 pages, so um, I think it's doable. Um, if you have a, like, just a day off in the weekend with the winter months coming up. Um, I would suggest you cozy up and like read this in one sitting. I didn't and I still really enjoyed it. However, I think I would have um, felt it as a whole piece more if I had just done it in one sitting. Either way, I thought that this was such a great book. Innsburg. Um, reflecting on what I was saying in the previous clip about her like writing being just so clear, precise, clean, but still very captivating. It kind of reminded me of like a snow globe, you know, like inside this glass, you can like shake it up and it's this like whole world with like a lot of things going on and also like a lot of substance but like contained in something small also like because of the size it's like this is like a snow globe that you went like this and you're just looking at the story inside of like a very contained area like that is this tiny little book so i thought that it was just doing so much inside such a small page count, which as we know is my fave. I think if you can give me less pages and do more with the writing, then I would, that's where, that's what I want. And like where I left off, we progress a little bit further into their marriage. They have a child and like, as we know, it's not going well. It's not a good marriage. I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is a copy that I borrowed from Jessica's Bookstack on Instagram. Um, so I did not underline and write things in this book like I do with other books that are mine, but I did write some things down. She writes this about feeling like when you're 
um, attached to someone in, in, a, in this context of love. You just really want to know not only everything about them, but like where they are at all times. Like you want to constantly have a string that connects you. Um, so she wrote, I thought how all of us are always trying to imagine what someone else is doing, eating our hearts out, trying to find the truth, and moving about in our own private worlds like a blind man who gropes for the walls and the various objects in a room. I thought that was really beautiful. I don't know if anyone shares this thought, but I do find slight similarities between this and Days of Abandonment by Elena Ferrante because I just read that. It's up there. Um, of course, very different, but both sort of, you know, with Days of Abandonment, it's like after the marriage completely failed and the main character Olga is like dealing with being abandoned. And like this marriage also falls apart and our character, even though she's, she doesn't like all of a sudden live alone, um, she is in ways abandoned by her husband. And specifically, um, there's like a situation with like a baby having a fever. And it reminded me of the main character in Days of Abandonment when her like youngest son gets a fever and there's like the stress of when your, your, um, your baby has a fever. For some reason, like many aspects remind me of each other between these two books. But she did write this. I thought of how men and women spend their time tormenting one another and how stupid it all seems when you're face to face with something like a baby's fever. That's good. I remember Rebecca from Rebecca Eats Books, our fave, um, that she was like, after reading this, I wonder like, why do people read normal size books <laughs> when like there are books like this and like Ginsburg, who can write a book like this, does so much with the writing in, you know, this amount of, this amount of book, you guys, really good. I also find myself when I'm trying to do these, um, these moments where like I'm reflecting on a book after I finish, I'm like trying to say like, yes, and I think the whole book represented this, or the whole book was saying this, or was making a comment on this. Um, and then I get frustrated when I can't articulate myself like that, but, you know, I have to remember also, like, I can just enjoy reading a really good book. Obviously, this is, like, a dark feminist classic, um, which that's hot. We love. You know, she just shoots him in the face. You're kind of like, okay, girl, you fucking do that. Like, which one of us is gonna bail you out? Because we're, like, on your side. Yeah. So, uh, loved it. Uh, this is also translated by Francis Frenet. So I don't think I mentioned that. And this edition is by Daunt Books, um, which I think Daunt is a publishing house out of UK. And I read The Little Virtues by Ginsburg, also published by Daunt, and I think that they just do really, really beautiful editions, French flaps beautiful cover. I look so orange and the room looks so blue and something really, really throws me off about it. Have a great weekend. I am on to actually a buddy read with Jessica, who I got this book from. Um, so I will film my thoughts about that, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Bye for now.